He was raised by Saturday morning cartoons. Posters from TV shows enveloped his room because he wanted to be the villain. The TV said, if you didn't think like the heroes do, you were different. Change your mind as they'll be coming after you. Your free thinking has expired and there's no way to click renew. They'll call you evil and enemies, dark side and doomsday too. And he loved it. So he was the loner. Picked on at school where he had no headquarters, not welcome in any group. There were lines and clear borders. The kids treated him like he had every type of disorder. He was like a mutant. So he wanted to rule his own island like Magneto did, where he could run away from all those mean school kids, because even he could tell that somehow he deserved better than this. But at home, his dad reminded him that heroes don't exist. So the only option was to be heartless to survive, because his dad would beat him like a drum every single time, over and over and over again, never seeing the repercussions back then. <laughs> Dr. Jekyll, who knew he had to hide till he could become a victim, strong enough to deprive happiness for those who never helped him out or even tried. But till that time came, he had to deal with what he got. He contemplated daddy's hatred, stayed up at night and thought, why was Batman so ungrateful that his parents were shot? Suck it up, Bruce Wayne. You're better off this way. And for some reason, he could never connect with Superman, though he too felt the S carved in his chest. Like, it stood for suffering a scar that he did his best to hide behind his emotion-proof vest. So he buried concepts of love that his dad put to rest. And ideas of friendship his school didn't express and found wisdom. He found wisdom in a ballpoint pressed to the suicide note on his desk. He signed it. Let the teardrops dry and define it. Gave up on happiness he knew he'd never find it. And so he walked away from a home he couldn't bear and passed a school that let him taste the meaning of despair. He jumped off the bridge. He wasn't even scared because he was a villain now. He was a villain now. He killed every chance for his life to be repaired and he had all those kids who made fun of him everywhere and his father sitting at home in his chair without a care and the cigarette smoke filling the air. So who do you think is the real villain?